All right, guys, let's check out the, the big boy, the Zin U1 with the Minecraft hands or Lego hands or whatever you want to call them. They're just, they're very unique. That will say that for sure, right? So let's get into the size of this bad boy and then we can talk about a few other things. I'm going to keep it pretty short and simple. This watch has been out a long time. There's already a ton of videos. I'm just going to kind of give my little perspective on it and uh, you can take it or leave it. So case size, the bezel sticks out over a little bit. So I'm going to give you two measurements. The case is 43, the bezel is 44. So, and it's going to wear like a 43. I know it's technically a 44 based on their website and the bezel and everything, but the lug to lug is just a touch over 50 drilled lugs. Offset crown is going to help with this, with this beast of a watch. Uh, thickness 14.6 millimeter flat sapphire crystal up top, AR coating top and bottom of it. You have a interesting case back here that's pretty bellied out and very smooth. Um, so that should be a little comfortable too, I think. The bezel also, when we zoom in, you'll notice it actually is screwed down instead of snapped down. That's an interesting thing because you can adjust it. So 22 millimeter lug width here. Bracelet tapers down to 20. It is a very nice H link. You have a stamped or milled center section stamped out on the rest. Only three micro adjusts, but you do have a dive extension here, a pretty good size dive extension. Pretty easy to deploy as well. And then the clasp is actually still pretty thin. Like most people, I would like to see a new clasp on this in. This one's uh, like from 2016 or 2017. I'll show you in the paperwork here in a moment. Sized up for my buddy Josh's wrist. This thing weighs in at 211 grams. It is not light. It's definitely got some heft to it. This crown is just under seven millimeter or two. And Zinn crown, Damasco crowns, all those guys, all the German ones that build like the uh, the uh, high tech built watches like this, they, the crown system on them is so good. Like you, you it like it wants to almost thread itself in. It's so it's so good. This one's using the Salita SW two hundred on there. It should be regulated. I didn't throw it on the time grapher, but every Zen and Damasco and a few other German ones that I've tried, they must have their watchmakers um, tweak them a little bit and get them dialed right in because they usually perform very good. You have a sixty click bezel axis on this. There's I don't know what we're gonna call this, right? Because it, it locks in place. And then it's just spongy feeling. That's not really play. There's no real play in it. It's just when you transition, it's just a little spongy feeling is all. But decent bezel action. Nice thud sound to it. And uh, it stays in place, no problem. Enough traction there. It's uh, it's not like crazy traction, but it's, it's not hard to turn it either. So 1,000 meter water resist on this. Yeah, wow. That is pretty crazy, right? Um, and this is the full tagamented bracelet case everything because you can get it where it uses the submarine steel and then has a tagamented bezel. That one is like 2300 I think. Uh, but if you go for this option, which is fully tagamented, the whole thing is this one's 2880. So the other one was like 2360. So Basically, spring the extra 500 bucks and just get the full tagamented one if you can find one. They're out of stock right now, so I don't know what the situation is with that. This one's actually from April of 2016, and it was picked up from Watch Buys. I'll put a link to Watch Buys down below. I have bought a few watches from them. They're fine to deal with. I think there's actually a Rob over there that I've dealt with. He was fine. He helped me work through. I had like a weird issue on a special or limited edition Zen that I bought once, and uh, he was super helpful. So um, give him a call. Tell them Random Rob sent you. I don't have any affiliate or anything like that. Like, they don't work with me. They, don't, they won't send watches over um, or anything like that. But uh, they're, they're good to deal with. So here's uh, another little book. Pretty much has a simple, oh, I guess it's, that would be my side. That would Maybe that's your side and this is my side. I don't know. Um, but if we zoom in on this bad boy, we'll take some close-ups. You can see the crystal pretty much disappears. Then you can see the AR coating on there. And this is this is a little dirty. Josh wears this a ton. But you can see a nice, simple, clean date cut out at 3 o'clock. A super legible handset. I know that's... You're either going to hate it or love it. You know, like just like a lot of other handsets out there. But uh, it definitely is iconic in its own way. And it is unique to this, this brand. And 
I think the U1 and there's some other ones, the U50 and there's some other ones out there that also do it as well. So you have a signed crown. I mean, when you go full tag amended like this too, the, the Vickers rating on it is so high that it pretty much is not going to show scratches. Or won't get scratched, I should say. So it has a really cool link system too. They they come with the tool because it's, you know, hexed or whatever on both sides or allen on both sides. So it's a little tricky to get size. Once you do get a size, you're going to be good to go. There's the U1 case back. And then the front again. For a size comparison, here it is next to a Seiko SKX. Let's pop it on my seven and a quarter inch wrist so you can see what it looks like. And again, like I said, it's not sized for my wrist. I can I can get it all the way around actually. I'd probably have to remove like one link or maybe actually I could probably just bring the micro adjust in and I'd be fine. You have to be a little careful sizing these Zin H Link bracelets because if I remove one link, then it's probably gonna be too tight. So I would probably just bring the micro adjust in. But it's got some heft to it, it's still pretty comfortable. Um, you know, if you like weighty watches, you're going to like this one for sure. There is another one that is very similar to this. That's full titanium. And I forget what it's called. It's like an EZ something. If you have one of those and you want to see that on video, hit me up. Cause I definitely want to see that watch. The titanium basically version of this watch. It is crazy cool looking. So, but this one, I'm surprised they did the AR coating on the top side of the crystal when this when the rest of the watch is all tagamented because if you're going to get a scratch on it it's going to be on that AR coating on the top of the crystal so I'm kind of surprised they did that but it is what it is let's kill the lights and check the loom I think that's one of the uh, maybe weak points of this watch because I think they use C1 which is I think initially not as bright as like C3 or something um, I mean it's it's bright but I think their formula, what they proclaim, is that it's longer lasting, more consistent longer lasting, if that makes sense. So it's plenty legible, but I haven't done like a longevity test on it. There's plenty of information out there if you want to research that. I think you can find that out. But big thanks to Josh for sending this in, and thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.